Yeah, I started checking or reviewing the chapter seven. It's called Pragmatic Matters. And the learning objectives of this chapter are providing a discussion or a general discussion about the realities of working with real data sets, address the challenges of data manipulation required for uh, data analysis, introduce practical topics and techniques for data manipulation, and illustrate the underlying issues using small toy data sets. Um, yeah, the chapter cover a broad range of topics related with data manipulation. I think um, I was familiar with most of them, although I found some um, few new things. And let's start going through them. The first thing of the chapter is tabulating and cross tabulating data. So, yeah. The data set that they are using in the book is the night garden data, um, which contains the different characters of a child's TV program and the oh, but yeah. Yeah, here, here they are. Yeah, these are the characters of the um, TV program and the words that they pronounce along the program and the times that they say during the uh, program. So this is the example data set to illustrate, for example, how to create a data frame or a table. So the, uh, the function to do this is table, uh, adding the two vectors, a speaker and utterance, or the, the words, and this creates the, the table. Mm, yeah, if, if we only put just one vector, it only say, for example, one, how many number of observations there is in each uh, category, but if we put like several vectors, then it's possible to create um, to create the table. So for creating um, a data frame, we use the function data frame, including the two vectors, and this can be converted into a table using the function table. Um, sometimes it's useful or is more useful for converting a data frame into a table, you see to use the function x tabs, because in here you can use a formula to say specifically uh, which which variables do you you want to to use in your table. And well, yeah, the next section is that well, this is because that some, sometimes the data you got or that you are collecting from a database, for example, or from other people that other people collected is not exactly in the shape that you need them or you want it. So many times you need to transform or manipulate, yeah, transform those uh, data uh, to get them in the, in the uh, correct form for your analysis. So, for example, sometimes it's more suitable for your analysis. If no, if if it's more suitable for your analysis, use proportions. Then and the like the row numbers can be converted into proportions using the prop dot table function by entering the table we created above. This one. Um, yeah, it creates um, a table here. Here is um, relevant that what R has done is divide all the row frequencies by 10 because we had 10 observations at the beginning. But it usually is not what uh, usually people use, rather than that is better to count frequencies or proportions by row or by columns. So in such cases, 
the proportion table function can, can be used with the margin argument with the number one for rows and the number two for columns. And here we have that calculates the proportions by rows, row or columns. Um, yeah. One final function um, to mention is tabulate since um, yeah, it, it takes numeric vector as an input and outputs the frequencies as the output or just by yeah tabulating for example yeah here is putting an a vector example and use the tabulate function and we here have the what we get is the frequency of the data so the um, second or the next uh, section is transforming and record transforming a variable or recording the uh, variable so again it's possible that sometimes you can you uh, would like to transform a variable for example from a, a continuous variable into a categorical one or convert a numeric variable into a different numeric variable for example um analyze you want to analyze the absolute value of the original variable and yeah there are many ways of transform uh, a variable however here it's mentioning some of the most uh, common or some of those that we are going to see uh, during uh, along the the chapter. So for this is using the for, for exa exemplifying this, we're using the like cared R data, which is um, which is a um, survey where um, they ask to 10 people a single question on the scale of one to seven. What, uh, to what extent do you agree with the, prop, do, with the proposition that dinosaur, dinosaurs are awesome? And here we have the answers. So for example, here we observe that this scale is going from, yeah, from one to seven. seven. However, that is not always the most like intuitive or obvious way for understanding or analyzing this data. So um, in these cases, we uh, might want to transform the data. For example, here it says that we would like to center, uh, center the, the vector or center the responses. As for example, that the no opinion e correspond with a zero value and the um, end points like the positive and the negative end uh, correspond with like a strong agree with this the sentence and strong disagree with the sentence so in this in the example in the example case is very like easy doing this by sub subtracting four from the vector and in that case, yeah, we have the center new variable. So this, yeah, the, it is this cause that, um, for example, in here, it, this could be useful for analyze separating the strength of the opinion from the direction of the opinion. Um, for example, in the first case, when we want to uh, see or evaluate the strength of the opinion, we want to take the absolute value of the centered data. And we could use the apps function for doing this, for example. We apply, we use the apps function in like centered um, data and we got the opinion strength and yeah, it's like, the yeah, it probably indicates the scale of the opinion. While, for example, to say or to visualize the direction of the opinion and ignore the strengths, you can use the signed function to do this. So in this case, with this with this function, all the negative numbers are converted to um, minus one. 
and all positive numbers are converted to one and the zero stays at zero. So if we apply the sign function, we can obtain the, the following. And um, yeah, having just negative ones and positive ones, it is possible to um, visualize or see more the direction of the answer rather than the string. So for example, saying that doing a simple manipulation or transformation like that is possible to separate two aspects of the uh, data. So, but also if, if the chapter adds that um, this kind of operation can also be doing or be by or in a data frame. Here is I'm putting some, some examples. First, we convert the uh, data into a data frame, subtract. Uh, well, but in such cases, we have to use the dollar sign for being able to transform or to replace the, the column data. Um, no, sorry, here is for adding a new, a new column to the data frame. Yeah, adding new. Yeah, it's adding a new group. At the end, we have like this data frame with the different uh, transformed data. And also the chapter introduces the cutting, of the, yeah, the ways for cutting a numeric variable into categories. So for that, it's possible to use the function uh, cut. Yeah, this is yeah, this is because it's some yeah, it's very free, frequently that it that the analyst want to wanted to uh, cut or convert a continuous variable into a categorical variable. So for doing this, um, there is a function called cut that allows this. But yeah. Here, for example, show that by using the sequence, the or the seek or sequence function, which is like create a sequence from zero to 60 by 20, it is possible to create the edges or the margins of each one of the categories. So in these cases, we are going to create uh, three categories and these uh, values are the, the value, the edges or the margins of the categories. We make a vector with the, the labels of the categories. And finally, with the function could, we can um, yeah, categorize these, these, uh, the values of H, H considerando, considering the breaks we set and putting the labels. So we ended uh, having rather than a vector of values, a vector, of the uh, types in or the categories. So if we, we can add the vector of the edges and make this as a data frame to have uh, this um, more complete data frame. So, but there is the could category also have defaults, for example, rather than setting the edges or the labels, you can just set the number of breaks and then the function divides into equally assigned categories. For example, here is saying, I mean, in here, the signs involves like here is like open, and, you know, like, for example, this category could be um, lower or equal than 1.93. Or smaller than, but not equal, just smaller than 21.3. So that is the nomenclature of the could function. And yeah, but this create um, equal size categories. So these the the author of the book creates a function called quantile could. And we're the, this is doing is, um, for example, suppose you want to divide the age variable into three categories of different size, but with approximately identical numbers of people. Um, 
So for example, for doing that, what we want to do is have breaks that correspond on the uh, zero, the 33, the 66, and the 100 percentiles of the data. And um, yeah, one way to do this is using the quantiles function, I think we saw it previously, I can remember. And then use those quantiles to put them into the uh, code function. And that is like, it could be done in two lines, but they create a simple function called quantile code that just do exactly that. And what else? Oh, still very small. Well, yeah, in the next like subsection, the author introduces more mathematical function and operations that are useful, possibly is more possible to that are very handy in data analysis. For example, square root for obtaining the square root, absolute value for is the function apps, logarithm base 10 is log 10, logarithm base e is log, um, exponential is x, And rounding to the nearest is round, rounding down is floor, and rounding up is selling. And here is some examples how to use them and the uh, output of the of the functions. And um, yeah, for example, here the round function is is re relatively easy to use. And there is an argument, which is digits, where you can set the number of digits that you want to use for rounding the, the value. But also there are a more, um, could be say, more useful function, which is SIGNIF, which provides the, where, where you can set, again, the number of digits do you, you want to preserve. But in this case, in this case, it, take the relevant or the significant digits. I mean, this is by ignoring the zeros from the uh, number. We can see that there, for example, using both functions with the same input, the desire at the output is different by using the, the two functions. For example, by using a round, uh, it only preserves zero and one, while by using signif, the function preserves the zero, one, and two. And well, yeah, here introduces something I didn't know. I, I have never, I, I didn't see this before. The modulus and integer division. Um, and in here, yeah, first let's see the integer divisions. So for understanding this, the author post or give this example. Suppose I have $42 uh, in my wallet and want to buy some sandwiches which are selling for 10 each. How many sandwiches can I afford um, to buy? Oh, this is a typo, this should not be here. How many sandwiches I can buy? The answer of course is four, but um, the answer cannot be 4.2 because no one is selling just like a part of a sandwich. So in this case, what we need to do is an integer division and we can use this uh, modulus, no, integer division operator, which is the percentage slash percentage to make this uh, integer division. In this case, if we divide 42 between 10, it gave us four. And the modulus, which is the same symbol, like but without the slash, is the, um, uh, the, the rem reminder or reminiscence after the integer division. Um, yeah, it could be better illustrated with this example. So suppose I buy an overpriced $10 sandwiches. If I started with $42, how much money do I have left? 
Y, and the answer R gave us on the common set is two. For this, we, we divide the 42 between or um, modulus 10 and give us two. And um, yeah, something here is that when you we use negative values, the function could have like counterintuitive results. For example, if we input less or negative 42, where is this called? Like integral division 10, the answer is less uh, five. So I, I, as I, as the book says, I also thought that the answer will be less four, but it says that Um, I mean, again, illustrates the the author illustrates this with an example. For example, suppose we owe the sandwich shop. You, you we, we owe to the sandwich shop a uh, forty two dollars, but we don't have like enough money to pay. So, how many sandwiches will I have to give them in order to to paying or for full paying the the store? The answer here is five, not four, because uh, if we only give them four sandwiches, we are still are owing two dollars. So actually, the answer is five sandwiches to fill the full uh, the full debt. So yeah, the yeah this is why the in this case the. Uh, integer division gave us less five. And a similar response is with the modulus operations when we provide a negative value. For example, negative 42 modulus 10 gave us eight. And the, here is the, like the explanation of if I have handed five sandwiches over the shop in order to pay my day of 42, then they now owe me $8. So the modulus now is this one. Um, I was not familiar with these two operations. Not sure, but I, sh I think should be useful for some kind of things, but so far I have never used, used them. Um, and the next part is logarithms and exponentials. So yeah, the, it says that there are three functions in R that you have, or that we call, that um, are mentioned in here in this part of the book, three R function. One is log, log 10 and exponential. Um, the first is, or the first to consider is log 10, which is now the logarithm base 10 says that the trick to understand a logarithm is to understand it basically the opposite of taking a power. Specifically, the logarithm in base 10 is close related to the powers of 10. So yeah, let's note that the 10 cube is 1000 and could be written here. And in R could be uh, enter or input like 11 at three. The trick to understand a logarithm is to recognize the statement 10 to the power of three is equal to 1000, which is equivalent to the argument the logarithm in base 10 is 1000 is equal to three. And mathematically, this can be written as follows, like log in base 10 of one, uh, thousand is equal to three. And if we want to do the calculation in R, we just type log 10 of 100 and the answer is three. So, but yeah, this is a relatively obvious answer, but it's useful because most of the time we don't know what is the answer for uh, other types of numbers. So for example, here, the, the, the 
logarithm base 10 or 500 is 2.6989. So it's useful having that. So yeah, but the chapter discussed that the log base 10, I mean, that we try to exemplify or use them because he's more like intuitive, but really mathematically, there is nothing special about the number 10. Um, um, so, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, that usually we, we find useful because the decimal numbers are built around number 10. But yeah, it is not always like useful in the real world. So um, sometimes the logarithms should be in other in different uh, bases. For example, it says that the R has indeed provide a function for calculate logarithms in base two, which is with a function called log two. Here is how we can use it. Um, yeah, and also alternatively, a third type of logarithm um, is, and it, it's the chapter says, it could be seen more frequently than the log base 10 or base two is called the natural logarithms. And this corresponds to the base logarithms in base E. Um, the, it explains that the number E is known as the Euler's number, and it is one of mm, irrational, is an irrational numbers with um, infinitely um, decimals. And is considered one of the most important numbers in mathematicals. And in the considering only the first decimals, the e value is two point seven one. Blah, blah, blah. Um, there are. Uh, I'd say that there is few situation in the statistics that are required to calculate the the powers of E, but they do not appear in the book. But it says that rising E to the power of X is called the exponential of X and is usually expressed as E to the X and in written as exponential DX. And in R we can, uh, calculate this using the function x. Suppose we want to calculate the exponential of three, and man manually we can do this by entering the e number and elevating this or putting hat and the number three. But the more the short way to do this in R is using the x function. And yeah, well, yeah. Mm, here is the mathematicians of frame write, write it as log the E. Uh, sometimes you need to use the, the log E, sometimes you just use the, which is the log function or just sometimes it's useful to use the log 10. Uh, this is given uh, if you are uh, doing some type of analysis where usually the the, uh, the log 10 is more when you like do data visualization and you want to, like, for example, say if you just want to represent your data um uh, focusing on the trend and so to see them with less variability because the point is 
when using the log is the is that the variance the, the variability within data points reduces so it is useful somehow use this log to reduce the variability uh, and concentrate the information than to uh, both visualize or attempt like applying modeling techniques or yeah, right. Yeah, for example, we can have like example peaks in the data, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking that's why. Yeah, I remember I saw one time in a code for plotting a map, a, a relief map, a topography map. I think it's because of that, for highlighting the the values, um, right. But something here interesting is that in R, the log function correspond to the natural logarithm, which is something uh, good to know. Um, and yeah, just for a quick check, the log for 20.0, I mean, this value, the uh, response or the result is three. So it's relevant to know that log function in R correspond to natural logarithm. And um, yeah, the next part of the chapter is extracting a subset from a vector. I think this is sort of like more, this part of the, the next, uh, all the next parts of the chapter I found them more uh, easily or I was more familiar with. For example, we um, come back or we return to our initial vectors, the speaker and utterance, and use them to doing some types of extracting things from the vector. So what I notice here is that combining or yeah using the two vectors with the square uh, brackets i saw that creates creates the i mean a no visible or uh, creates uh yeah invisible i don't know how to say just in the environment um data frame and that allow, allows to extract particular values. For example, in this case, the when the speaker is maca paca, we, ex, I mean, from the utterance vector, we want to extract the uh, values when the speaker is maca paca. And this, you, but yeah, by using this uh, code, we can extract the moment or the uh, words where the speaker is Macapaca. So, and also is um, the next part is how we can use this um, symbol. I don't know how it's called, like um, percentage in percentage to match multiple cases. I have uh, used this in, in with the player for filtering for the use, using the filter function and using this uh, in symbol to match again different or multiple cases and it can be used in the same way ways for example uterans and extract all the cases that correspond with these two uh, values and again we can use this in this kind of uh, code but in such cases it, it is not just give us the one I mean, it's going to give us the um, the values from the two categories or the two types. And yeah, next part is using negatives indices to drop elements, which uh, I mean, it's relatively easy. Again, using the brackets, we can specify which values of the vector we uh, would like to to drop from the vector. And the next is splitting a vector by group. 
for this, the, they are uh, suggesting the split function where you can input the, the, uh, yeah, again, this is not provide, this is again, not, it, it, this is not providing a data frame. It's just like giving to the function the vectors. And it seems that the function again creates a environment data frame that allows to split the, to split the data frames by a speaker. And here we got like this creates a list uh, object where each uh, element of the list is the the speaker. So, um, or else having a list, it says that we could extract um, parts of the list or yeah sections of the list by using these uh, two brackets. For example, here in the example here is saying that from the list, from the Mac Apache speaker, we would like to extract the element one, one, and it is pip. And yeah, what else? It says that this sometimes this could be really um, complicated, but for someone who is not very familiar with working with list or when you're having a list with a lot of elements. So for such cases, it could be more useful visualize all the things within a list. Um, the, the authors, I mean, the author creates a function called import list for uh, calling the list and then using the function who for then, uh, visualizing what is in the list but mm, i don't know so far i don't understand quite well this function created from this isl package because because i mean when i printed it has all these elements but if you remember our list only should contain these elements um not, not, not sure. I mean, it is in this case, it's only for visualize what elements you can have in the list. Um, and the next part is extract a subset of a data frame, which can be done with the subset function. And um, it's a kind of, it's similar to the filter of the player, I think, where the you could input your, what is the, I think is the input is a list. Nope. Yes. Ah, yeah, it's a data frame, sorry. Well, the input is a data frame and you say that you want to subset or in, will be equivalent in the player will be filtered when the speaker is equal to Macapaca. And what do you uh, want to select from, from, from that part of the data frame? In you can just like, for example, select the utterance. Um, I think in, I, I, uh, I mean, in the player, I will do this in several parts. For example, first by filtering and the second one or the next sentence will be selecting. But yeah, this is an alternative way to do this. And the next part of the chapter is something I think, well, I am fam familiar, very familiar with this, which is using square brackets for subsetting things from a, a data frame. Here, for example, provide us a, um, example of the positions of the values within a table or a data frame. And we can call the each element using the double uh, brackets or the, yeah, the brackets saying like, for example, we want to extract the, um, I think what is here in, 
think the first one is the uh, columns and the second part, I mean, after, before the before the command is the columns and after the comma is the rows. So in this case, we would like to extract the column four. No, sorry, this should be then rows and this should be columns. So in this case, we want to extract the row four and five and the column one and two. So it should be mm, 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 row one and two, maca paca pip and maca paca onk. And yeah, here is, but Mm, yeah, there are more queries more elaborated, for example, just like asking the first two columns using this or yeah, there are more exa more uh, different things we can use by subsetting a, a data frame by using the brackets. And where else? The next part is sorting, flipping and merging data. For sorting a numeric ve vector exists the function sort. And it could be given the argument decreasing true or false, which is if you want them to increase or decrease. And it could be possible sort text with this function. Um, yeah. Here we have more functions for this, let me, because I didn't yeah, finish that. Yeah, this is with the text, but also we can uh, sort a factor, with, again, with the same fun function, but also um, it's possible to set levels in a, in a factor uh, vector by using the function factor and then setting the levels you want to have. And um, yeah, then it's possible to sort the factor. And also here, I think this is an this is this function is called sort frame. I didn't know it. That where it's possible to reorder the columns on your data frame. For example, saying yeah, the first argument is your data under your speaker. Uh, no, sorry. Is the you input the variables to you in that you want to use for doing the sorting? So, for example, it says that here first we want to sort by speaker and then by line. So then first sort by speaker and then by descending uh, line. Or if you use the negative, could be sorting by ascendant line. And yeah, here we have more examples about that. And the next part is binding, binding um, vectors together. For example, yeah, um, we have two types of vector that can be joined or combined through a data frame function. Or also could we use this C bind function to put together uh, the columns or the yeah the columns or the R bind to put together uh, the rows. Something important is the, that the number of elements always should be uh, corris or coincide or correspond for being able to do this without error. And yeah, we could do the same by repeating a vector. Um, where else? Um, and yeah, the easy or easy way, an easier way to do this is by row copy. Like you provide a vector and says how many times you want to repeat the the values, and is the same but in the columns form, but using the called copy function. 
and what else you can it's possible also transposing or sometimes it's, it's required to transposing a matrix or a data frame and for doing that the function is t which only transpose the data set it doesn't reshape it just like trans transpose it and yeah It says this is a function that do the same. Ah, yeah, but converts the output to a data frame. Yeah, possibly it's more useful. Um, the next part is reshaping a data frame. We, uh, yeah, which is, I think, is like very frequently used. Convert a data frame from wide format into, from long format into, into a wide a format. So far, I have done that just by using the 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 dplyr uh, function or tdir function. I think it's like pivot the pivot wider or pivot longer. But here is suggesting alternative functions for doing that. For example, wide to long, which I think the equivalence will be like pivot longer in the player, but uh, it's doing the same things. You can provide the data frame. And um, let's see. Within. And they is a type of like people longer, people wider, something like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We, we are about, uh, it's uh, two minutes left. So, yeah, basically, yeah. where else the more basic functions, long to wide, is also provided. And yeah, this is the same. And yeah, for example, here's like some basic functions for shortening, a, for working with text, like shortening a string, like a, a string trim, where you can decide the number of characters you want, or if you want to uh, just subset, subset by, uh, by a type of characters, how you can use the paste function for pasting to different uh, strings. Thing it's not providing the paste zero, but there is also the paste zero function. And um, yeah, more more functions for working with text, which is for example a string split uh, is the way for splitting a string by a pattern or by a separation or a symbol found within the sentence. And um, yeah. And um, yeah, basically it is what we we have here in this chapter. Um, here is concatenating with I don't know this function, but ah uh, yeah, this the a mixture of paste and print, but it's like concatenate the the uh, elements of the text, for example put cat on the elements of the test and paste them. Um yeah. I think I think the rest of the the functions are basic. Let me see what is this. And yeah, it says like uh, they are the limiters of the text. For example, when, when you are writing text, yeah, I remember that for using this game. For example, for putting a sequence into a different rows, I mean, a sentence to shorten it or to reduce them into two rows, you can use the escape. Rather than a space, you can replace this by this symbol and that is going to create a new line. 
and you can use all these different types of um, symbols for configuring your text. Um, yeah, again, more functions for working with uh, text. For example, matching and substitute, substituting text by patterns within the text. Um, what else? Regular expressions. Here he, we have some functions for reading some files, like for example, read CSV files or read, um, yeah, lo loading data from SPSS, re reading C Excel files by using the read Excel ex file. And you can read Mat MATLAB and Octav files. And yeah, basically the the other types of structures called, can be seen in Aris matrices, which I think is and um, yeah, it's possible to order the factors by using the order argument in the factor function. Um, some. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, the, it's basically what we have here in this uh, chapter. Some like basically the chapter is like okay, stop sharing, like an introduction for manipulating data. So, and yeah, there is all. Oh.